Hey there, Adam here. Recently there's been a lot of buzz about the latest generation of popular game engines. It's enough to say the news about the new projects powered by the widely popular Unreal Engine 5 seems to dominate the industry media. I myself got caught up in the UE5 hype train and did a little checking at home to see what the premier version of the engine has to offer. You've seen the results of that in some of my previous videos about how The Witcher 4 might look. Today, however, I'd like to talk about probably the biggest competitor to Epic Engine's flagship product. Let's take a closer look at... It's no exaggeration to say that modern gamers, fed with ever-increasing numbers of teraflops of power of their favorite hardware, expect incredibly beautiful productions from game developers. In order to meet these high expectations, the Unreal Engine 5, so far probably the most effective contender to the title of the king of next-gen graphics, makes its appearance in more and more news about upcoming games. Sure, CryEngine once showed that it can melt the processors in the GPUs, Frostbite also shown as an example many times, not to mention the Red Engine and its benchmark in form of The Witcher 3. On the battlefield, however, Unity Engine has also established its strong position, which in contrast to the powerful tool from Epic Games, at the time of its debut, target a slightly different segment of developers. Now, I'd like us to go through the history of its creation, its subsequent iterations and eventually get to the present moment so that we can understand how this turn it into this. So, let's get back to bygone era where smartphone didn't exist yet and the internet wasn't that much popular. On the 21st of May 2002 at 1.47 pm Nicholas Francis, a Danish programmer, posted a request on the Mac OpenGL forum asking for help in implementing the shader system in the game engine he was developing. After a few hours, Joachim Ante, a programmer living in Germany at the time, also developing his own engine, answered the request. The gentlemen liked the acquaintance so much that they decided to join forces and jointly develop a product, which will soon become the first version of the Unity engine. In so-called meantime, David Helgason, who saw the potential in the technology being developed, joined the team. That, in short, was the birth of the development studio named Over the Edge Entertainment. Their idea at the time was to create games, but this later evolved into an approach to create an actual tool to help others create their games. In order to attract potential buyers of the technology, the gentlemen decided to actually create a commercial game, which would illustrate the capabilities of their tool. And so, in 2005, Google debuted the first official title powered by Unity. It was a production designed exclusively for the Apple Mac. The development process coincided with improving the engine itself, so that its premier version, 1.0, was as polished as possible. Certainly, the fact that the creation of a real game simultaneously with the work on the tool on which it was based allowed developers to better match the engine to the potential requirements of the target users. Ultimately, thanks to this approach, the final build was warmly received by the audience, which were mostly hobbyists and small independent studios. By the way, it was this target group that distinguished Unity from popular and very expensive at the time Unreal Engine version 2.5, which itself ensured their success. Although Google released in March 2005 was not a staggering commercial success, it did bring in enough revenue for OT to expand its stuff so that improvements to the engine in version 1.0 gained momentum. The tool was released in June 2005, supporting only one platform, Mac OS X which meant a rather limited potential customer base. Only version 1.1 allowed the creation of projects for Windows and web browsers. That build also allowed the implementation of external C++ plugins so that developers could use the hardware which the engine did not support in the basic version. The next upgrade bearing the number 1.5 added greater compatibility with older configuration of PCs, making the work easier for many homegrown developers. 
Unity 2.0 debuted just two years after the original and Over the Edge Entertainment, in order to be more accurate with the nature of their flagship product, changed its name into Unity Technologies. This version received support for DirectX libraries, which meant a nod to users of Microsoft's operating system. If I remember correctly, the infamous Vista was on the market at that time. To be honest, to this day I have shivers at the very thought of that system. In addition to DirectX library support, version 2.0 also received some interesting features including network streaming, real-time soft shadows and an advanced Terran engine, Unity Asset Server and new code-based GUI system. The year 2007 also brought us a release of another well-known item, which subsequent iterations are still quite popular to this day. The iPhone. Owners of Unity Technologies quickly picked up the potential hidden in Apple's product and other smart devices produced by other manufacturers at that time. And so, in December 2008, a dedicated version of the engine appeared on the market, called, of course, Unity iPhone. What is interesting, the creators treated it as a separate product. It is worth mentioning that this approach meant that over the next years, the vast majority of games for mobile platforms were built on Unity. As for games that were created based on technology provided by Unity 2.0, it's definitely worth mentioning two of them. Off-Road Velociraptor Safari, a game about driving down feathered dinosaurs, and Dead Frontier, a top-down shooter focusing on exterminating all sorts of zombie-like abomination. Both titles debuted in 2008, but it's worth mentioning that the second one is still alive and with a bit of hard will, you can still play it. September 2010 saw the release of Unity 3.0, which brought with it a lot of modern solutions affecting the quality of generated graphics, so let me just name a few. Beast light mapping, deferred rendering, umbrella occlusion calling, low level debugging, fmod audio filters. The company also decided to unify the editor tool to make it easier for developers to work on different target platforms, such as console or smartphones, including those running on Android. Version 3.5 hit the market in February 2012, along with support for then popular Flash. Third generation of Unity also brought players several interesting productions, such as Dead Trigger, zombie shooter well known from mobile platforms. Escape Plan, one of my favorite titles from PlayStation Vita. Thomas Was Alone, interesting but completely out of my scope. And called in some circles Kerbal Space Program, whose first version appeared in 2011. Back in 2012, the next generation of engine was put into hands of developers. Unity 4.0 added the DirectX 11 support, a new animation tool called Mechanim, the Shuriken Particle system updated with collision functionality and Linux support. Development of the fourth generation of the engine lasted about three years and lived to see more than seven refreshes, with each one adding or extending functionality in addition to fixing bugs. In 2012, VentureBit reported an interesting piece of information. According to the article published there, at the time more than 1,300,000 developers were using Unity Engine to develop their projects on supported platforms. The desire of engine's creators to make it universal meant that very quickly their tool became a basic for projects not related to gaming. Unity was used for all kinds of presentations, virtual tools, simulations, training systems, experiments and even fitness applications. In a word, Unity has become a multitasking tool. Before we go further, let's list some examples of games based on the fourth generation of engine that have been released. Dead Trigger 2, a continuation of the successful FPS about shooting to undead. Max, the Curse of Brotherhood, really enjoyable platformer released on home consoles. Unearth Trail of Imbl Batuta, a game which became famous as Uncharted Ripoff. Oddworld New and Tasty, it's a kind of a remake of a cult PS1 classic. Wasteland 2, a continuation of 1988 classic produced by InXL Entertainment. 
This to name just a few of the titles, but of course there were much more games created due to growing popularity of the tool. For those of you curious, I'll leave the link to the full list in the video description. A big step forward in the engine's history turned out to be a release of Unity 5.0 in 2015. It added improved lighting and sound system, supports of WebGL so that browser-based projects created on the engine did not require special plugins to work. All you needed was an application compatible with the standard. The implementation of real-time global illumination, light mapping, NVIDIA Physics 3.3 and cinematic image effect made the production took on a completely new, more realistic look, the effect of which you can admire just in the background, on an example of Unity technology demo called the Blacksmith. Version 5.0 in later updates also received support for Vulkan API and new platforms such as Nintendo Switch and Facebook Game Room. The fifth generation of Unity, among the flood of low-quality creations on Steam, gave us a few gems. Here are some of them. Layers of Fear, really interesting horror from the Bluebird team. Overcooked, fun cooperative game about preparing food in the fast food restaurant. Record, one of the underrated exclusive for Xbox One, it was plagued with numerous bugs and stability problems. The game later received an overhaul, which fixed a large part of them. Pokemon Go, a game that does not need to be widely explained, a kind of phenomenon that made even older people set out in the field in pursuit of virtual creatures. Umbrella Corpse, a spin-off of Resident Evil series, which is rather unsuccessful approach to cooperative shooters. In December 2016, Unity Technologies announced that it was abandoning the numerical labeling of its product, thus moving to a model of more frequent updates. And so, the first version released under the new name was Unity 2017. It brought further improvements to the real-time graphics rendering engine, color gradient and world building, on top of tools to facilitate analytics and performance monitoring. A note to developers not strictly associated with game dev turned out to be a timeline and cinema machine. With their combination you can easily apply animations on a drag and drop basis and program camera movement. In short, the tools facilitated the creation of cutscenes and movies, that's just to say. The turn toward more realistic graphic and the aforementioned tools made the engine eagerly used in the film industry of which one of the first examples turned out to be a short film brought to life by Neil Blomkamp and his founded in 2017 Oat Studio. You may recall the director himself from the blockbuster District 9 or Elysium movies. The Oat Studio has released a two-episode sequel to the Unity tech demo titled Adam, entirely created on the engine. Unity 2018 followed in the footsteps of its predecessor, once again making it easier to work on a realistic looking graphics. In addition to streamline the familiar features in the package, we received tools based on machine learning, so that, for an example, games could learn players' behavior. Later updates also added ray tracing support, a tidbit that is slowly becoming standard in new high budget projects. Financial reports published in 2020 showed that the active base of devices on which applications based on the Unity engine were installed at the time amounted to a bagatelle more than 1.5 billion units. Additionally, according to estimates of the company, at the time 50% of all games on mobile platforms were projects powered by their engine. The popularity of the tool seems to be confirmed by the most popular mobile games that have been written for it, namely the aforementioned Pokemon Go and Call of Duty Mobile. The engine is, of course, still being developed and further extensions and new studios incorporated into Unity technology structures seems to outline the direction in which the developers are heading. In June 2020, Unity unveiled a tool to facilitate its work in creating augmented reality applications called Mixed and Augmented Reality Studios, in short, Mars. In the same year, Unity Technologies acquired Fingerfoot Advanced Technology Group, which specializes in providing real-time 3D technology solutions for industry. 
In December 2021, it was announced the acquisition of Weta Digital, a company owned by Peter Jackson and responsible for special effects in movies such as The Lord of the Rings. And at the beginning of 2022, the Ziva Dynamics, team responsible for creating extremely realistic looking and behaving virtual characters, joined the Unity Technologies family. And so we came to present day, where the technology demo mentioned in the beginning is a perfect summary of the development of the entire company. We can see here the culmination of the pursuit of continuous improvements and unification from the birth of the tool behind which stood the desire to facilitate the work of people like its creators, the systematic evolution into more and more advanced forms through the side work with related fields of entertainment and industry, which eventually became a parallel branch of development and as important as goal as the main idea behind its creation. What will the future bring? Well, from gamers' perspective, looking through a list of games that have already been made, it's hard to find titles that have defined a particular genre or have gone down in the history of the industry with some special achievements. In this regard, the competitive Unreal Engine and its stunning looking Gears of War, Fortnite or Batman Arkham Knight and many others definitely reign supreme. As such, I wouldn't expect to see many games offering genuine jaw-dropping graphics. In the case of Unity, I would rather see it expand its influence in the mobile market, which with the ever-growing gamer market is a very promising option for the parent company. As for other branches where the engine is used, I'm not surprised that soon we will see more TV and cinema production using the benefits of this technology. After all, the first steps have already been made. The aforementioned Old Studio or even the recent remake of The Lion King which features graphics created in Unity. The fact that the Unreal Engine has already found its way into Disney production is not insignificant, just to mention the Mandalorian series. Industrial use of Unity is also a very interesting topic for discuss, and certainly more than once we will come across its use in our everyday life, be it on a trip to the museum or while visiting a doctor. Here the possibilities are endless. In fact, as in any area where Unity appears. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Cheers.